I'm back in the West End again and today I'm at Jamie the Musical. I'm about to go backstage, meet Melissa who plays Margaret, interview her and have a little snoop around. So let's get going. So I'm here with the lovely Melissa <laughs> who has just taken on the role of Jamie's mum after understudying. How long did you understudy it for? About 14 months. About 14 months. Yeah. Is it like, now you've taken over, is that bit of like nerviness gone? Because obviously when you were understudying it, if you got thrown off, yeah. then you have that like, oh, I've got to go on and do I know and da da da. Whereas now, because it's your part, yeah. you're a bit more like relaxed into the role. I am, and it's a bit more of a day to day thing. I know exactly what I'm doing. However, and it only, I only had the feeling today, I got a text message from Joe from my company manager, yeah. and I instantly get that feeling of like, oh, I'm on to, oh no, I'm oh, no, on yeah, yeah. But I instantly get that feeling yeah. of like, oh, who am I on for today? Because obviously I covered all three roles. But um, yeah. but no, so that sort of constantly sort of like, oh well, if I go into work tonight, I'll just sit and watch something. It's, it's just gone now. I know that, I know how my week goes. Yeah. I know that I get up and I'm coming in and I do the show. And, and I feel, oh, touch wood, that I'm in a really sort of, you know, good routine now. Yeah. It must be nice for friends and family as well, because you know, oh, yeah. they, they don't get the text going, coming, No, coming, I know, coming. and a lot of people are still saying, oh, we're coming on the 29th, are you going to be on? And I'm, yeah. I'm a bit like, yeah, yeah, but actually, you know, yeah. holidays and things yeah. like that are always, uh, it's good to check. Yeah, but, um, I always text but, my friends yeah. that are in shows, like, oh, have you got a random holiday book on this day? Exactly, like, exactly, yeah, but before it was always, okay, I'm on this week, that week, and that yeah. week, but so now it's so nice to go, well, you're in tonight, that's great, yeah. you know, because I don't have to say, oh, I'm on, yeah. because I am on. And also, so. probably people are a lot more spread out as well, rather than yeah. everyone coming in yeah, one week. Yeah, exactly, and you can exactly, everyone. constantly, or you yeah. have a week on when you're in understudy, and you constantly here till 11 o'clock every night because you've got people in and you're entertaining you've got yeah. your agent and they're bringing people um whereas now it's kind of like people can just drop in and stuff so it's it's amazing yeah. it's really lovely so what is it you love about the show um many things, many things. <laughs> <laughs> it's set in my hometown oh lovely so i'm from sheffield yeah. so it it immediately strikes a chord with me yeah. straight away i auditioned for the workshops um about four years ago i think oh, wow. um and when i read the script and i was just thinking oh my gosh this is amazing a musical written in your hometown yeah is pretty cool you I mean, know. we're never gonna have that in worthing but um, <laughs> <laughs> um so straight away it sort of it really strikes yeah. a chord and you um and you can relate to the characters yeah. so much more because you know the people, maybe not so much Miss Hedge, the teacher, but when I was covering the likes of Ray yeah. and obviously with Margaret, these are these are women that I know. Yeah. You know, they're my parents' friends, they're my aunties. Yeah. You know, they're sort of they're the girls I go to, I went to school with because now we're all in of a certain age and yeah. they're you know, they're the same age as Margaret and Ray and especially Ray, she's such a funny character yeah. and um, just yeah. literally walk, walks in the back door and, and that's what it's like with my family and friends mm. up north. So it was so it's so lovely to connect that yeah. way the music is amazing yeah. I get to sing two stunning stunning songs and sometimes um, if I let myself on a Saturday night and I'm sort of singing he's my boy and mm. it's kind of towards the end the big bit and I'm looking up towards the guards and I sort of think pretty sure right now on a Saturday night in the West End I think I'm singing the best song at the moment for a woman yeah a lot of people may have their other opinions no, defying gravity they... and you know uh, used to be mine you know they, they, yeah but I definitely um, I think you can connect that more. Like, He's My Boy is such an amazing song. Mm. And for those of you that don't know, she's singing obviously about her son <laughs> and the fact that he's growing up and he's very confused about what's going on in his life. And, and wh however, whatever he throws at her, yeah. he will he will always be yeah. she, she, you know, She knows how he works, she knows how his brain yeah. works. And he's before she sings the scene, he's been horrible to yeah. her. Um, but it's because she's tried to protect him. She's hidden so much from him yeah. to try and protect him and try and keep him to make sure that he's happy. Yeah. And then boom, he find he finds out it's all been a lie. So it's you know yeah. it's a complete confession to herself. Um, without trying to be massively over emotional with it as well, you have to be really yeah. stoic like Yorkshire people are. Mm. Uh, really try and keep a lid on the emotions and not just be. She is on her knees, you know, yeah. metaphorically in her head she's literally pouring her heart yeah. out but she still has to keep yeah um a level she, of yeah and she, ex exactly and for jamie as and well. also for you as well doing it eight times a week 
you obviously, I remember when I went to see Jodie Prenger in Oliver, mm. and when she did um, a song as He Needs Me on that final night when she won, and she just like let it rip, and yeah. then I went to see it, and I was like, oh, she's not there. But it's because you've got to, you've well, got to think for yourself as well, haven't yeah, you got to think for your voice? Yeah, it's maintenance, yeah. Maintenance, you've got to do it eight times a week, haven't yeah. you? So you've got to keep that like. Yeah, and you certainly get into, I mean, there's a lot of, for me, that song, there's a lot of, there's a huge storyline through mm. it, there's a lot of uh, things to be thinking about, yeah. w line for line. But also, I'm quite, you know, it might sound very natural, but I'm quite, I have to be quite technical when I'm singing. So yeah. there's a lot of gear shifts, and I know that I have to sing in that part of my voice at that bit, and then I have to change to that, and then I must make sure I breathe on that bit to do it. So, you know, it, it, you have to think, you can't you're doing just all sing that. It, yeah, no. in your head. And so, but and actually, it, what I have found is I did think this, I think, I, I thought, gosh, eight a week, you know, now singing these big songs. I've been on for big roles before doing yeah. a week where, you know, if I was, when I was Donna at Mamma Mia, I'd be on for two weeks. and. I would be so tired by Saturday night, but it's yeah. because you're not constantly doing it. And I do find, again, touch wood, that <laughs> um, I, I'm in a place now. Yeah. But what I haven't done is think, right, don't give too much Monday, a little bit more Tuesday. I can't think like that. No. I literally am doing, I go on and I don't think about it. I don't think how I'm, how for her I'm pushing or yeah. some days. And honest, I can honestly say, I, I thought that every day would not be exactly the same, but no day, no way I sing it is different for it it's is the same from one day to the yeah like, <laughs> like some nights i'll come off and think god that bit went really well but that bit was a bit weird and then some nights you yeah. your bits that are usually easy for you all of a sudden throw you a curveball and they're yeah. tricky it's, yeah so it's i think you're never going to get a perfect performance no. you know maybe but once a week i might be like tick <laughs> imperfection is perfection isn't it? so <laughs> exactly it's like, like, and i think with this show because they're real people rather than like you know sort of like fantasy characters yeah like it's that grit and that it's that mm. you know that sort of imperfection if you call it that that yeah. keeps it so real. It's, bo it's bare, it's raw. Yeah. We we are you know she's in. I, I read a review the other day or listened to a, a review or something and they said you know she's just there in jeans and a t-shirt and her hair's yeah. in a messy bun. She's got no shoes on. It it is literally it yeah. is literally that nobody stood poised in some incredible costume. Mm. It's a, it's a raw story and it's 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 people yeah. we know. It's now. It's because when I first saw it, it was Josie. Mm. And obviously she played Mrs. Wormwood. Yeah. So when it came to the big dance finale, she's <laughs> yeah. just at the back clapping. I was like, what? And I thought, she's so good at dancing. Why is it? And then I was like, because... We can't really see, she, we can't really show that um, yeah, yeah. And Margaret's she, a brilliant yeah, dancer. Yeah, Mar Margaret wouldn't dance. I know. And it's so good that, you know, they could have been like, right, okay, go, chuff, clear out, off you go. <laughs> like, um, but they don't because it, it's so, because it has to be yeah. so real. Yeah, that was one of my first things when I had my very first one through, like, in the summer of, yeah. where are we now, 19, summer of 2018, I had my yeah. first run through, and the director said to me, obviously he had a lot of notes for me throughout yeah. the performance, but as we just finished the finale, and he sort of said, now all that lovely training that you've got, <laughs> you have to do to, because yeah. I you're, love, I you're, love you're, finale, you're, you're I love, and I'm a frustrated dancer as well, I love to dance, yeah. and I think in my head that I'm a brilliant dancer, um, so I actually do love to go for it in the finale, and sometimes I think, you know what, is Margaret done? It's yeah. Margaret dancing in the street. Yeah, you've got to do that. Mum, mum, I've got to get wedding. down and dirty yeah. with the year 11s. Yeah. The Zoo Nation choreography of like, oh my kid in. I know. <laughs> um, so when you covered Miss Hedge and Ray, mm. what did you love about those parts? Um, Ray, I just I loved the humour of her yeah. and the friendship that she had with Margaret and the closeness that they had of, of her being sort of like this, you know, she says in the office, I'm family. Yeah. It's like family, like, you know. We all have those people in our lives. Yeah, we that have are, it. all mum and dad's yeah, friends or aunties, aunties and uncles. <laughs> yeah, aunties. But also, I think when you live in London and you've lived, you've got your London family. So you've got people yeah. that are not related to you, but they're friends. But they are so close to you, yeah. closer than some fem family members. So I love that closeness and the humour that she has. She has some cracking lines. Wonderful number. Yeah. The lovely connection she has with Jamie. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I just loved. I just loved playing Ray. I I miss her. I yeah. sort of think. And I don't. I couldn't ever really pinpoint the last time I was going to do it. And I thought. Oh, this is my last scheduled one and then the next day I'll be on for another so I never really put her to bed yeah. you know but I I loved playing her I think mm. it's a fantastic character and then Miss Hedge well Miss Hedge um I just had to get down with my bad self rapping and yeah. it used to freak <laughs> me out I don't know why I just was I don't know I think I'd sort of I'm a mum now and I've been playing mumsy roles for quite a few years, yeah. I've been in jeans and trainers playing Trish and Kinky Boots, a yeah. motherly character. Now I'm playing Margaret. I am a mum. Mm. My days of putting on a heel and prancing around the stage and being gorgeous, I just felt mortified yeah. about it now. I thought, it's so long ago since I've yeah. 
been like that on stage. Even, like with the giant, because I saw that you covered all three diamonds. Yeah, things. yeah. But obviously, it's only Tanya really that is. Yeah, like, exactly. But stuff, but right? I was a swing at my mummy. Yeah. You know, I was dancing in the ensemble, and I, you know, I have done all that. And yeah, yeah Wick, I was in Wicked. You know, that's all very stylized. Yeah. All the ensemble, um, you know, one shot day and yeah. uh, the opening of Act Two. Yeah. It's all very very stylized. But I just have <laughs> been away from it for so long yeah. that to get my work of art on. Yeah. I felt really out of my comfort zone, so I really mm. had to push myself and get myself in a zone for Miss. What well, tell myself to get over mm. myself is basically yeah. what I had to do to do Miss Hedge. But I, <laughs> the message would come through. I'd be like, Ooh. no. But that's so no. nice to hear, though, because when you look at like your CV and stuff, you would think like you know, you'd be like, oh, she's fun and everything. But to hear like it's really like enjoying to hear you say like you know, I was. Like, I think ten yeah. years ago, I probably would have been all over it, or yeah. if it was my role. Now, yeah. if I wasn't playing with Margaret, then I then I would and I would really, but I don't know. I just mm. kept coming to it thinking, oh God, it's not yeah. very me anymore. Yeah. And I used to, um, I mean, rapping 40 year old woman anyway, do you know what I mean? But, <laughs> um, but I just used to have to really get to, but I did love the scene work that I had. And I yeah. used to, once I'd been on, ended up being on for a week or so or something, I thought, oh, actually, I'm really getting yeah. into it now. And uh, and then once you embrace the yeah. wrap up on there yeah. with the you know with the heels on up there watching Michelle Visage used to be yes. love watching Michelle, um and but then I used to the office scenes really good she has some really great moments yeah. Miss Hedge it's a fab role she she's the role that I can never like pinpoint whether she's like a goodie or a baddie I oh, am yeah. um, I, I never understand it because she's obviously she's trying to do her job she's trying to yeah. like sort of keep all the parents happy yeah. but then, I think that's the thing yeah. isn't it I think that's what it, probably most audience members come away with you know she's you know I think in the opening she's trying to be like what's that that's nail varnish well yeah. especially that's how I came yeah. to it um but also she is really trying to keep in you're at school this can't be happening yeah keep it real what have I told you about keeping it real yeah. then obviously the fantasy number of work of art yeah um which is you know fabulous and how maybe she thinks of herself in her head or it's yeah. how Jamie yeah. you know um has her in his head um and then at the end, she has to be. She has that phone call before, yeah. Yeah. where she's obviously phoning someone that she's trying to have a date with, and I think yeah. that leading into that scene, she's got mm. this conversation to have, yeah. but she's had that phone call before, and that's that's yeah. take capacity I bucket. <laughs> I get that a lot. That one tiny little drop sends me over the edge. And so I think she's she's. We see the real Miss Hedge. We see yeah. Janet. And yeah. It's Janet. Um, on you know leaving a message for a guy she's been on a date with and yeah. you see that side of her and then straight away she got to be like you yeah. know stoic again I, yeah. I'm the I'm the teacher um so I, but then the, uh, right at the very end and she says Jamie go in you know and nice shoes nice shoes miss I think at the end that you know she yeah. she absolutely <laughs> appreciates mm. and has you know thinks what he's done and how brave he's been she's she's obviously celebrating mm. that at the end and obviously you have had Michelle Visage yes. play Miss Head yeah. and Rita Simon. Oh Rita, yeah, we literally just left, like it feels yeah. like minutes ago when now we've got Priya Kalidas. Yeah. But we have Faith Hosa. Faith Hosa. We have Faith well. Faith Steps. Faith Steps, I know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> and you know, she's she's <laughs> she's in your phone and you're sort of like, Happy birthday. It's like it's yeah. Faith Steps in my phone. Yeah. But she is such a lovely woman. Yeah. We've had some um Hayley Tamadam was here yes. as well. Brilliant. Hayley and I worked together years and years ago. Mm. We've known each other a long time. Um so we've had some wonderful ladies coming in and playing that role. Now, did you watch Vinegar Strokes in <laughs> Drag, Drag Race? Race. Yeah. yeah. And then and then Drag Race actually became sort of like, oh Thursday night. No, I I'm gonna go home because I need to catch up on Drag Race. And I really do, because I've only ever watched one series of the US version. I mean, so I watched, watched it. well, I've watched Roy's um, yeah. series, season six, I think, um, Bianca Del Rio's, who was obviously yeah. coming yes. back to us next week. Because um, somebody said to me, who watches it and is a fan of that show, yeah. watch his series, it's the best series, yeah. you'll see why he wins and why he's yeah. so good at his job. Mm. So good at being a drag queen. Yeah. So I watched that and I really got into that and it was yeah. really good to sort of see his journey before he came here and I was like, okay, now I get yeah, it. I get it now. So I did know the format of mm -hmm. Drag Race. So then of course I watched yeah. uh, to support Daniel. Um, Didn't know his name was Daniel. Vinegar Strokes. Vinegar Strokes. Um, and um, gosh, yeah, it was sort of, it, it's it's so strange. Yeah. Like he was, we'd be on stage and we'd go home at night and <laughs> there he is on the yeah. telly. But yeah, you know, he's Hodge having... Hodge. <laughs> I think Leighton ended up end, ended up choreographing a whole thing to this hodgepodge thing. We've got merch now. We see people in the audience, and I'm like merch, and somebody's yeah. in the audience with hodgepodge <laughs> couture on. It's a thing, and you know he's having mm. a wild time. Yeah. I think he will um, leave us in January and have a wild time. Yeah, because uh, they're all going on tour, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, right. yeah. But yeah, because I'm totally obsessed with drag queens. So I've never watched it. You see. 
Um, I never watched it because American drag is not my drag. Well, I, mine's Brighton drag. Oh, so course, my my drag is hodgepodge. Right. So yeah, yeah. yeah, so vinegar strokes. Yeah, totally I think it's been great. Seat. I think yeah. it's been really good. Um, I and I actually, I really wanted Davina to win. I think Vivian, the Vivian is amazing and had a beautiful yeah. look, but I just thought Davina had the clout and the heart as well. Yeah. I thought she's kind. Mm. So um, I hope they come and see us. I yeah, hope they come and see us. I'm pretty sure they will. Yeah. Um, so just quickly before we go, like obviously like you said you've been in Mamma Mia, you've been in uh, Wicked, you've been in Kinky, Kinky Boots. Boots. What would you say is your favourite role of all time, or is it Margaret? Oh, it's Margaret. Yeah, hands down, because um, Margaret's got the role of a life. It is. Isn't I think it? I, I I believe so. Um, and it's been a huge thing for me as well yeah. to have been. You know, I could have walked away from the business nine years ago when I first had my first child. Yeah. Um, but I didn't and I came back from having my first and then I did Wicked and then I got, I've both been pregnant on stage with both girls. So I've been six, seven months pregnant on, in Wicked, I think. Oh, wow. I don't know what they kept doing. They just said your costume again. And I'd be like, where? What is magic <laughs> like costume? Like I couldn't tent. see where it had yeah. been adjusted. It looked exactly the same, but it fit my bump. It was amazing, miraculous. Yeah. Um, maybe it's the magic in the building. Yeah. But um, so I could have, you know, it's hard work. I could have gone, I can't do this anymore. I can't understudy anymore because of the rehearsals. And yeah. I, you know, the rehearsal time when you are a cover, yeah. it, it needs a lot of, yeah. uh, you need to be able to just give yourself to that yeah. job. Uh, but then when this came yeah. up, I was like, oh, I can't not that, mm. you know, there's something pulling me to this job yeah. because it's Sheffield, because it's Jonathan Butchell, Dan Gillespie Sales, mm. Tom McCree, you know, beautiful creatives, yeah. amazing show. Um, it it, it mm. pulled me to it. So, to then for it to pay off yeah. like it has is it, like, just... It doesn't have to. I mean, a lot of people probably who don't know the business inside out would would think, okay, yeah, so, you know, Beck's left. So yeah, you and maybe it's just an easy yeah, thing yeah, for them to yeah. do. But they don't but have no, to do that no, at they all. Don't have it's to the do fact that. that they did that is it's, amazing. I mean, like, it's rare that they do yeah. as well. I mean, because if you're a... If you're a good understudy and you prove yourself to be reliable mm. and a good understudy, they're yeah. like sometimes like you know okay we'll keep you there. Yeah, yeah. If we need someone really exactly. Reliable. And that has, that basically has been my career yeah. up to now. Too useful, you know, good to be able to keep you there to make sure you can cover all those roles yeah. and stuff. So, but before this job, I was definitely after Kinky Boots was like hands down. I had a lovely lovely little role on yeah. Kinky Boots and I wasn't understudying anyone there. So that was really lovely job for me. Trish um, is. Um, the one she shouts at him, doesn't she? She's sort of, um, she's kind of the mother figure to yeah. Charlie. Yeah, yeah, she works in the factory. We don't know Charlie's mum, so we assume she's that, that she's... never a truer word spoke. Never a truer she? word spoke, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in a Northampton accent, which is not, not easy. easy. Yeah, because it's sort of like, it's, it's not very, northern, no, it's not southern. And it's, it's bizarre, and I, I hold my hand up and yeah. say I'm quite good at accents, but yeah. that threw me. Because it's not, you're right, it's not northern, it's not southern. It's kind of Midlands. I love, I love. But it's the, got the, like an Anglian the broad, bit. The Broadway, to, um, Broadway oh, well. soundtrack. I, I love it. I know. But, you know, it started on Broadway. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, when we had the dialect coaching, I was just, I was thrown. Yeah. But then I did get a handle on it and everyone used to yeah. be like, speak smell, ask smell. Because I had yeah. quite a lot of vowels in my, spe yeah. in my speeches that were very Northampton. Yeah. But, um, so yeah, so this is definitely paid off being yeah. in the show and I'm now living my dream living your dream living my best life living your best life <laughs> living your best stage of life <laughs>I'm very, very lucky that we've come onto stage now and Melissa is going to show me around all the secret bits backstage. <laughs> this way. So, we go this way. We've got a bed up in the air. Yeah. Because everything's got to go somewhere. So, we've got nowhere to store it there. So, they yeah. put stuff up in the air. Oh, there's the toilet. Remember the toilet scene? Yes. There's the toilet. Oh, wow. That lives up there as well. Oh. <laughs> a lot of cigarettes. Yeah, a lot of cigarettes. Bottle of diamond white, school books. Um, and a tissue if you need to get a mm -hmm. tissue. The year 11, the girls' bags Bags are here as well. Stuff. And then do you have personal props as well that you have in your dressing room? Or is everything? No, everything's on here. All yeah. The, yeah, all personal props are here to be picked up from yeah. here and put back exactly yes. where you got it from. All the kids' year 11's rucksacks, mm -hmm. Luke, um, Dean's rucksacks. These are the infamous desks yes. that get pushed on and make the desks in the classroom, but obviously on the other side, make the wall. And they let this on the top because they light up as yeah. well, which is really brilliant. So this is the crossover. Right. And okay. is where all the costume changes happen. Any quick changes, but mainly 
there's a lot all the year 11s tend to get ready down here or into yeah. the proms so all the drags put their big special wigs on <sighs> and headpieces on down here and uh, this is you, the location now isn't it uh, well this is the finale, finale this is yeah. um, Trey Sophistique's um, mm. headpiece for uh, the finale his here Hugo's jacket for the oh. finale work of art costumes mm -hmm. hairspray water bottles you know the whole thing and then here are all the understudies boxes so everybody who covers Jamie so yeah James is Hugo and Adam is Jamie so in the middle of a show god forbid if it were to ever happen boom just pull yeah. them out and they can be done so oh here's Jamie's famous uh, dress that he customizes himself Love limited, edition. limited edition um boys sit here this is where the boys sit mm -hmm. and get um get dressed all their names are on the backs of their uh so really yeah so it's um this is where we people kind of kept and trying to keep quiet during the show lovely and this is how obviously you get from one side of the stage to the exactly other. so cross over to you yep. move from stage uh left to stage right <laughs> So that's one of the entrances into the house. So if yeah. we're in, if we're on stage and we're in Jamie and Margaret's house, um, you kind of that's as if he's coming from downstairs. Yeah. So uh, that's one of the entrances um, that we use there. Um, that's where the the band are obviously upstairs. Yeah. Up on the ledge, and they're behind those screens that we do see them at times. So um, that's the crossover that the MD has to. Well, all the musicians actually have to go up and all cross mm. there. I wouldn't like it being up there all the way through the show. If you don't know, one of like sort of traditionally in the old days, the musicians would always be in a pit. There's a line in 42nd Street, so that's why we keep musicians in a pit. Um, <laughs> and whereas now in a lot of shows, they are hidden like behind stage or under like Maiden Dagon and they were in the stage. Yeah, and also usually drummers are bless them. They're usually in a in a room somewhere completely yeah. separate <laughs> to keep them quiet. Jamie's. Uh, birthday banners and another uh, another prop table here. This is birthday cake. His bag. The girls prom bags. Yeah. Their own bags for the prom. Um, I love then, how they're all kept here so that they can't forget them. As soon as they come, they get dressed for prom, they come down to here and they pick them up from here. So it's it's a prop. Yeah. It's not a part of costume. Yeah. Um, because they've got their phones as well. All the year yeah. eleven all have a phone, which are working phones they all get charged in a little thing over oh, there wow. and they'll get charged and they can take pictures on it so there's loads of pictures on there from yeah. cast back as well like you can see oh. pictures of courtney space on some of them still it's really um, spacious back here it is actually here it is because yeah. it is well it is a bit a, built as a playhouse as a theater mm. but i think if you've ever looked around Places like the Prince of Wales or the um, Prince Edward yeah. or the Palad Apollo, the Apollo Palad Victoria, yeah. they were cinemas. Mm. So they were cinemas in the 30s. So the space at the sides and up yeah. is not is not much really. But this is an old, yeah. a really old playhouse. So there is room in this um, in this wing for cosh for set pieces to come off and on. However, we don't have many set pieces no. that come off because it's the walls mainly that make the set. And we just have the few things that come down yeah. from there. That's the sound rack there. So that's where the sounds sit and listen to make sure all of our uh, mics are doing what they should be. I make all my entrances from this side. I've mm. just realized yeah. I'm always in this wing. I never come on from the other side. I'm the good fairy. You're the good fairy. The good fairies always come on from stage uh, right and the wicked rich yeah. from stage left. So I'm the good fairy, basically. <laughs> well, thank you so much You're for welcome. chatting to me today and showing me round. I'm going to go and watch the show now, so I'm so excited to see Melissa and the rest of the cast in action. <laughs>Show. it was absolutely amazing you will laugh you will cry it's got so much heart the story is beautiful it's a real like it's a real I don't know how to explain it it's not a gritty story but it is like it just it will really really move you the story it's all about like finding yourself and accepting people for who they are and it's just amazing the cast were faultless everyone including Melissa Melissa was amazing as expected Leighton was brilliant he's you know he's about to finish and then a new Jamie will come in so I can't wait to see him too so definitely come and see it thank you so much again for coming backstage with me at Jamie the Musical I've had the best time today don't forget to like this video subscribe and turn on the notification bell also, lots of celebrities have played the role of Miss Hedge. If you could cast anyone as Miss Hedge, who would it be? Comment down below. See you soon.